Welcome to Conversations with Leaders. My name is Miriam McLemore and I'm an enterprise strategist with AWS. I am thrilled today to have the opportunity to speak with Amanda Jobbins, who is the Chief Marketing Officer for Infor. Amanda, welcome. Could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself? Wonderful, yes, thanks very much, Miriam. Yes, uh, I am the new Chief Marketing Officer at Infor. Uh, I joined about two months ago and uh, have a long career in B2B marketing in enterprise software companies. So fantastic to be leading marketing for Info. Thank you again so much for joining us. Can you give us a little bit of background on Info for anybody that is not familiar? Absolutely. Yes, Info is the leader in industry specific cloud application solutions. Uh, we specialize in providing the last mile functionality that industries need so that they can get a fast time to value uh, with their applications deployment. Our solutions are multi-tenant and highly customized to micro verticals uh, in our target markets, which include manufacturing and distribution, as well as healthcare. And we also have industry leading capabilities in supply chain and asset management. Terrific. Now you've had marketing leadership roles in a number of technology companies, including Oracle and Dell. You know, could you tell us a little bit about how you go about setting your marketing strategy? Absolutely. Yes, in setting the marketing strategy um, for a technology company, I think much like other organizations, the key thing is to have a really clear perspective on the objectives for the business. So what are you trying to grow? Uh, where are you trying to differentiate? How are you trying to position yourself in the market? So in coming into a new organization, um, as I have done here in the last two months with Infor, what I'm looking at is where are we already successful? Where can we grow the business? Where can we be more successful? How can we attract new customers? And how can we help our existing customers on their journey to the cloud? So in thinking about the marketing strategy, obviously then I'm looking at all the vehicles available at our disposal, such as thought leadership, such as great partnerships, like our partnership with Amazon Web Services, uh, such as demand generation, our web presence, how we engage with customers digitally online, and how we make sure that they understand the journey they're on and how we can help them with that transformation for their businesses. Uh, in terms of the differentiation for M4, the company itself, it's really set out its stall as the industry specific cloud company. So we pride ourselves on being able to provide uh, really um, detailed capabilities that are very industry specific. So if you're a food and beverage manufacturer, that's one level of specificity. The next level is that you're actually a dairy producer, or perhaps you operate in aerospace or distribution. For each of those different sectors, we have industry specific functionality for those customers. So they're able to get up and running with, it, with their ERP solutions in the fastest time to value possible. So what is your philosophy on customer journey and the accelerated need for digital beyond, obviously, as you mentioned, connection to your team, but to, to drive these companies forward? It's challenging, isn't it, in, in these times to build those digital engagement journeys with our customers. But that's, of course, where we have to focus because now more than ever, so much of that buyer and engagement journey is happening online. Um, it's a big focus for my department. It's a big focus for me, constantly thinking about ways we can innovate in terms of our engagement with our customers, how we can offer them new kinds of digital experiences so they can experience our solutions uh, online before actually meeting us, so they can um, undertake total cost analysis, um, so they can take a look at some of the peer communities implementations of our solutions and get some confidence and comfort that it's gonna be the right solution for them. So it's a huge focus. Um, I think that's probably what I spend almost every waking hour thinking about actually, is really how to optimize that digital customer journey and then bridge that to the engagement model uh, once they come on board. Yeah, I love that. You know, at Amazon, we very much believe that sharing customer stories with other customers is very powerful. It gives you that use case of something real um, that another customer has experienced. 
Um, and I think that's a powerful way to, to assist your, your customers on, on the journey. Is, you know, the role of marketing, is that, you know, driving some of those use cases, identifying, you know, customer opportunities to take better advantage of the technologies you provide? Is that, that part of the, the strategy you'll be defining? That, it absolutely is, Miriam, yes. Um, it, it's key that we identify model implementations, for example, from other customers in similar sectors to the new customers who are joining us so that we can showcase those environments to new customers. Um, it's also key that we facilitate the right conversations between the peer communities that exist in our very significant customer base. So we do, of course, um, put forward industry councils so that uh, you know, VPs of supply chain or distribution leaders from different sectors can meet together and talk about the challenges that are facing their businesses as they drive towards digital transformation in the cloud. Marketing right in the center of that. I mean, it's not only communicating uh, what those changes will need to be and how we can help our customers with that transformation, but it's also through product marketing, which sits in my department as well, uh, looking at the requirements, of course, that our customers have against the roadmap that we have planned, making sure that we're bringing them the features and capabilities that they need to stay at the cutting edge. In addition to digital transformation, the other hot topic, and I imagine you see the same, is data and analytics, right? And the use of AI and ML is, how are you using data and customer insights to, to drive your roadmap? Data is critical, of course. It's critical for our customers. They are gathering, collecting, analyzing, and using uh, data in unprecedented volumes now. And their ability to leverage data and get the kind of insights and analytics they need to run their businesses is critical for their business success. Um, within marketing as well, Miriam, of course, we're taking a look at how we get a better understanding of our customers and prospects and the market at large. So I and my team are looking at technologies like intent data. We're looking at lookalike modeling and propensity to buy models that will help us both target and then critically understand, of course, the customers. Um, we couple that with you know, primary research, actually talking to live customers, getting their feedback uh, on the capabilities we're developing and trying to understand together with them the people and process challenges they're facing. Because I think more and more, you know, it's clear there's a lot of technology capability out, of, out, out there today, but really our customers need trusted partners they can work with, uh, with whom they're going on a journey. And, they, and that journey is, is, is in big part due to the people and process transformation that they're going to have to go through as well. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, you know, as far as omni-channel analytics, is that something that, that you're placing more importance on? Omnichannel analytics is absolutely critical, of course, because that's really how you get the depth of understanding about the journey your customers are on when they begin to engage with your brand. Uh, we're trying to understand what are they looking for online? Um, what kind of search terms are they entering? Uh, who of our competitors are they looking at? What reviews are they reading? What kind of communities are they in? What kind of peer communities do they engage in actively? Um, particularly with our industry-specific focus, some of those communities uh, are quite unique. So where are they learning? And then how do they want to engage with a brand once they've decided they, they have a need for a solution? All of that data we need to pull together, ratify against you know, the optimal targets for our business, and correlate with our existing customers' data, which will tell us a little bit about the propensity of customers to buy. We can use that then to develop lookalike models that uh, will help, help me and the team improve our cost to reach and uh, reduce our cost per lead and ultimately uh, improve conversions. What are some of the, the things that are important to you to maintain that customer connection that we feel like we've all lost because we don't get to have you know, dinner together or lunch or coffee breaks? How are you addressing that? Yes, we've got all the same challenges, of course. Um, we have an annual flagship event um, as well. It's called Inforum. And we recently ran that um, digitally. Uh, we normally have uh, 800 sessions at a live event, much like Amazon also in Las Vegas. You know, 80 exhibitors, that's our sort of classic scale. You know, tens of thousands of visitors to the event physically. 
Um, and this year, of course, we had to uh, turn that on a dime and deliver it virtually, as many of our uh, colleagues in the industry have had to do. And yes, we were all thinking out of the box about ways to keep the experience as personal as possible. And we did, we did a few um, specific things. Miriam, we had a virtual wine tasting as part of our digital event, our digital conference. Uh, we made best use possible of you know, innovative video techniques so that the experience of the keynotes um, was really compelling. So there, there are ways in which you can leverage digital events to get a higher quality of customer feedback in some ways, actually. And I do definitely see us continuing that. Um, virtual roundtables also, uh, you know, I've always actually had those as part of my marketing mix and I definitely want to continue them. So C-level roundtables using video are highly productive because a C-suite executive does not actually want to spend three days on the road, can't really afford that kind of time commitment, but they do want to meet peers of the same level and have a sort of meaningful discussion about their business. And you can facilitate that through a digital event you know, very quickly and simply with 45 minutes of time, you've got fantastic access and feedback. Yeah, I, I completely agree because, you know, our ability to get to a broader set of executives at the same time, that has actually been better during the pandemic because you're not juggling everyone's travel schedule, right? And, and you can get people online, even from wherever they happen to be and have a good and more targeted in some ways in exchange because, you know, you don't want to spend a full day traveling and then a full day in a conference room somewhere. So it'll be interesting. I think it's also making people prioritize, you know, it's making people be really strict with their time and be very focused on what are the project, the projects that they need to progress within their organizations. And is this meeting or engagement really going to advance those priorities? Yeah, completely agree. And, you know, talking about priorities as you meet with marketing peers and you're two months in now to your, your role at M4, what are your top focus areas? I think it's very much around the topics we've discussed, actually, which is this constant reinvention and transformation we as marketeers have to go through and have to deliver against in terms of finding innovative ways to engage with our customers, ways that are new for them. All of our customers are going to many virtual events now. Uh, they have, they're, they're receiving a lot of digital communications. They're bombarded day in, day out. So how do we as a brand cut through that noise uh, reach them with something really engaging that speaks to a business problem they have and then deliver a digital journey that enables them to self-serve and do it at their own pace, but still be there for them, essentially, and still be present in the mind of the customer. Yeah, uh, I think it is It is the challenge in front of all marketers. Um, like everyone, you know, you get invited to uh, so, so many different webinars and virtual events every single day, week. Um, that it's overwhelming and you just start hitting delete. You know, what, what do you think are the imperatives for you and your team? Yes, I'm, we've got to build brand at Info. Um, that's clear to me. We're not as well known as we should be. And it's time to take our rightful place as a leader in uh, ERP cloud solutions. We have the technologies, we have the capabilities, we have the customers, but we don't have the brand. So I will be spending a great deal of my time focusing on raising awareness of M4 and making sure that the purpose of M4 is understood by our customers and the market in general. I'll also be taking a long, hard look at our digital platforms in terms of marketing automation capabilities. We were talking before about, uh, you know, where do marketing leaders focus now? What do we talk about when we get together in a room? Uh, we certainly talk about the digital journey and how to engage customers, but we also talk about how we're going to enable that with our own tech platforms. And that's our own tech digital transformation that we have to go through. Yeah, it's uh, interesting to you know, imagine coming into a company and just trying to get a handle on, on where to focus and where to invest. It's, it's interesting. There was a recent um, Gartner study that said where... CMOs are, you know, light are more positive, right, and more optimistic compared to their C-suite peers going into 2021. They're also less likely to take risk, and I was fascinated by that. At least that was not my experience at Coca-Cola. My my marketing colleagues were always the the ones 
headed out to the, the edge, uh, bleeding or otherwise. Uh, so is that something that you see? And, and how do you think about taking uh, risk at M4? Yeah, I, I wouldn't agree with that at all, actually. I think that uh, most of the CMOs that I speak to, and, and also speaking for myself, I think if you don't take a risk, you will not stand out. You know, these markets are so busy. There are so many messages that are reaching all of our prospects. Uh, you have to take some risks. You have to be a bit daring. Otherwise, you're not going to cut through the noise. That is really, um, I find that quite surprising, actually. Um, I think in terms of sort of whether we're optimistic about COVID, I think we're realistic and pragmatic. Uh, I think it's important to follow the science. It's important to be uh, ready for any scenario. And, you know, hopefully now with news of a vaccine out, um, you know, things will return to some semblance of normality. But, uh, you know, I've spent quite a bit of time in Asia as well. And Asia has been through this kind of um, epidemic in their region um, a number of times before. So it's been an, a, a, you know, a very difficult time for a lot of people, incredibly difficult time, but it's also made us all more resilient. And I think that's a theme I'm seeing with many of our customers as well, that they're really preparing themselves to be strong and resilient for the kind of transformations they're going to have to go through in order to continue to win in their markets. Yeah, it's that word resiliency comes up in a lot of the conversations that I have, of course, as as we're talking about cloud and the the resiliency that cloud offers to companies versus, you know, relying on their own internal hardware um, and approaches. So certainly I've I've heard a heavy theme of um, establishing re re resiliency in these these crazy times. So Amanda, you know, obviously with your um, very impressive resume, you're a, an important female leader in the, the tech industry. And you and I both know that um, it's, it's not as diverse in the tech industry as it needs to be. Can, can you talk a little bit about your experience and about diversity and inclusion at M4? Inclusion and diversity is absolutely critical for in four, and I think across our societies right now is very much in the frame. At in four, we have an inclusion and diversity program. I'm very involved in that across the board and specifically for women's leadership as well. And it's something I personally believe in very strongly, not just gender diversity or LGBTQ rights, um, but also cognitive diversity and diversity of styles. I think that when you have diverse teams, you get the best outcomes. And when you have uh, teams that feel psychologically safe and you make them psychologically safe, then people can really contribute in incredible ways to your business. Yeah, it's so important for people to feel like they can bring their whole self to work. And that, that is a lot of the conversation that I've had with leaders and the awareness that is, I think, growing and was, you know, not present in our business conversations previously is starting to get, a, you know, space on the main stage. It, it's definitely permeating now. I think everything everyone is focused on, and it's certainly a top priority for us at M4. Well, Amanda, thank you so much for your time today and your insights, and, and we wish you all the best in in your new um, adventure with M4 and your, your move. Uh, uh, across continents. Um, just a terrific to have time with you today and learn a little bit about you and about M4. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Miriam. I really enjoyed it. 